Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is your brother Daniel Hayagadju. As you may know, Dr. Iyad Qunaybi is one of the most renowned du'at in the Muslim world. He has recently published a video on the distressing situation in Sweden where the social services in that country have been taking children away from their families. I wanted to share the translation of Dr. Iyad's video as well as add some additional information at the end. Esteemed viewers, you're probably aware of the trending news concerning Sweden and the kidnapping of children. Sweden has issued a strong denial and they've received support from some TV channels like El Hurra, which is sponsored by the US as is well known. El Hurra published this article, Sweden debunks Muslim child kidnappings using quotations to imply that it's fake news. Okay, let's see what this article says. Quote, the Swedish Psychological Defense Agency, which was established to counter misinformation, said the allegations could be traced back to an Arabic site whose creators support the Islamic State, i.e. ISIS, end quote. Aha, so those who support this campaign against Sweden are ISIS supporters. But wait, many Muslims have spoken out about this topic, not just one or two websites. And many Muslims have presented evidence and testimony. But no. Let's just assume that all of them are ISIS members or supporters. We won't accept any of your proof, Muslims. All of you are either under the influence of ISIS or are actually members of ISIS. It's not possible for such crimes to occur in Sweden, the Scandinavian country known for its beauty, justice, prosperity, freedom, and tolerance. How can you accuse such an exemplary country of kidnapping just like that? Don't you fear God, Muslims? Don't accuse Sweden falsely. This is why in this video, we won't take your word for it, Muslims. We will only take the word of people who have nothing to do with Islam and see what they say about Sweden. Okay, let's first review this report by NCHR, the Nordic Committee for Human Rights. Nordic means Northern European, meaning Finland, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and possibly Iceland. This committee issued a report in 2012 titled, quote, Child Removal Cases in Sweden and the Neighboring Nordic Countries. Let's see who wrote this report to make sure they're not members of ISIS. Let's see. By the way, all the references will be provided for your verification in the description box below the video. This part of the report states, quote, We, the undersigned lawyers, former judges and law professors, professors of psychology and investigating psychologists, medical doctors in Sweden, including the lawyers, members of the steering committee of the Nordic Committee for Human Rights, for the protection of family rights in the Nordic countries. Aha, uh -huh. so these are the report authors and they're all from Sweden. Couldn't they also be ISIS? This report was issued in 2012. As far as I know, ISIS was formed in 2012 and I never heard of it reaching Sweden in its first year or that some of its members were lawyers, judges, and law and psychology professors. We never heard any of that, so we can easily assume that these report writers have nothing to do with ISIS. They continue, quote, we are hereby sending this request to the Council of Europe, the Minister Committee, and the European Parliament for a thorough investigation of the very prevalent and destructive child removal cases that are being practiced on a daily basis in the neighboring Nordic countries, i.e. Sweden and neighboring countries. I'll read this part again for those of you still in shock. Quote, of the very prevalent and destructive child removal cases that are being practiced on a daily basis in these neighboring Nordic countries. This report was written by Swedes, who are most probably non-Muslims. By the way, this report has a summary, i.e. a full report and a summary. In the summary, you'll find this, quote, Background. Since the beginning of the 20th century, Sweden and the Nordic countries all have laws which give the social welfare authorities the power to forcibly remove children from the care of their parents on what appears to be arbitrary grounds and place them in foster homes or institutions among total strangers. 
From 1920 to the present day, more than 300,000 children in Sweden have been removed from their homes and placed in compulsory foster care. The same detailed report, linked in the description below, states that social services in Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and Finland target sole parent families, such as widows, widowers, wives whose husbands were denied entry into the country, divorced people, etc. So the social services target such vulnerable families, as well as economically and educationally disadvantaged families, families with health challenges and immigrant parents. This is the answer to those who say, no, it's not specific to immigrants. This committee specifically lists immigrant families. The report also says, quote, parents with religious and philosophical beliefs, which do not seem to be politically accepted, are often deemed as unsuitable parents, which invariably leads to remove the children from their families and place them in foster homes, end quote. Aha, uh -huh. so this conference held 10 years ago confirms that those whose faith or philosophical beliefs do not suit the Swedish authorities will be targeted by the social services in Sweden and others to remove their children from them and place them with foster families. Wow, such amazing freedom in this model secular democracy. Elsewhere in the report, we find, quote, since the beginning of the 1980s, a great number of families have fled from Sweden in order to protect their children from being taken into care and placed into foster homes, end quote. So families have been fleeing since the 80s once they've realized what was happening. Let us review another reference. Does this reference come from ISIS? No, it doesn't. This reference in El Compass, which is an Arabic-speaking news outlet backed by the Swedish government. Where's the proof that it's backed by the Swedish government? You'll find it in the comments. By the way, this is public info, not a secret. This report was published in 2018 following the symposium. You'll be shocked by how flagrantly candid the report is. So long as they're empty words uttered in these closed halls with no follow-up action, let everyone say what they like, no problem. Let us show everyone how democratic, just, and free Sweden is. After all, there's no follow-up, there are no consequences. Whoever has an agenda in mind can implement it as planned, so let people vent and babble away with empty words. Say what you wish, then let us do what we wish. This report on Al Compass's website, which is backed by the Swedish government again, states, after a long introduction, that the activist Elizabeth gave her speech. Wait, could Elizabeth be ISIS? Probably not. Her name implies that she's not even Muslim. Then the activist Elizabeth gives her speech and talks about her career and the history of social services law in Sweden. She stated that the social department doesn't implement the law as it's enacted and that the report of the social department are approved in court 98% of the time. So the court just rubber stamps its approval on whatever social services want. Elizabeth continues that when she decided with about 40 lawyers to protest against the social services for its abuse and lack of commitment to the law, it didn't work. So she had to go to the European court. So Elizabeth, along with 40 lawyers, were ignored by social services and she went to the European court where they were only allowed to speak for five minutes. Just five minutes. Look how just they are. Observe the justice of the European court. Speak for five minutes, then shut up. She continues, quote, In 2010, 17,200 children were withdrawn. And this is a frightening number. And until 2014, 32,000 children were withdrawn. She added, The government spends endless funds on families where children are placed, estimated in the millions. Swedish foster families that may be Christian, atheist, or homosexual. Families of two men or two women. Anything goes. She goes on, quote, And this is an incorrect situation because the social services lure the detained child and provide him with whatever he wishes so as not to return to his family. So Elizabeth is telling us that they bribe the children by giving them whatever their hearts wish for. Just don't go back to your natural family. They're not suitable for you. 
The allowance which is paid to foster families is estimated to be between 20,000 and 40,000 krona per month free of tax, which is about 2,000 to 4,000 USD per month. About the removal of children, Elizabeth said, quote, there are those who encourage this as there is a commercial market for this thing. Just like a slave market, basically. And this is a dangerous report and the danger is not only in stripping the child of his original culture, but also on luring him and telling him that if you want to go anywhere, we will send you. And they say to him, we are ready to buy you the latest smartphone if you want. And all this just to convince the child to stay with them and to show him that his parents cannot buy such things. In the same report, it states that an attendee asked a question about how to deal with the foster family's tricks to keep a child from attending the interview that the social services sets with his family, i.e. tempting him with an excursion or a fun activity outside at the time of the interview. So the child is removed from his natural family and placed with a Swedish foster family. This Swedish family resorts to tricks to prevent the child from seeing his parents. So they tempt him with trips to the park, sports, etc. So he doesn't see his parents. According to the lawyer Paula, this method must never be used, but reality is one thing and the law is another. This method must not be used. The meeting with parents must be facilitated so as not to confuse the child. Meaning that this trick should not be used, but it's used anyway. And the foster family, or should we say the kidnappers, take the child and prevent him from seeing his parents. There's much more in the report, including a review of the biannual appeal process by the parents to get the child back. When one of the attendees asked how long they should continue submitting appeals, Paula answered that, quote, a lot of people have no experience, so that's why a lawyer must be appointed to take care of this task. Unfortunately, as you say, yes, due to the lack of experience, things drag on six months after six months till years go by and the parents are unaware. So things could take long years and you keep appealing and appealing to get your children back without success. The lawyer Jihad said, oh, his name is Jihad, so he must be a Muslim, so he can't accept his word. Even though he repeats the exact same things, that these kidnapping families are paid generously, and so they use all means to keep the children with them, by hook or by crook. Then Sheikh Hassan, the imam of a mosque in Malmo, said, quote, I will talk about a 30-year experience in Sweden where I worked as imam in the great mosque and worked on divorce cases. I also work as a consultant and expert with the state on social and religious affairs. I'll offer you some brotherly advice. It's not the social services that comes knocking at your door. It's you who go knocking at theirs. Shame on you, imam. It's people like you who usually rush in to defend Sweden and embellish its image. Elizabeth the lawyer and Paula the lawyer and a committee of people who have nothing to do with Islam are telling us that the children are kidnapped and bribed to prevent their return to their families. And then the esteemed Sheikh Hassan, the state consultant in religious and social affairs, comes to deliver the backbreaking blow. The Sheikh says, no, you're the reason your children were stolen from you. From such people, we are being stabbed in the back. Anyway, the last question from the Al Compass article, again, a site loyal to the Swedish government, was about a child who was mauled by a ferocious dog in the home of his foster family in Uribro. Who bears the responsibility for this child's death? Just imagine how a family would feel after their child was removed and placed with a foster family Then this family neglected him or became angry with him for some reason. Allah knows what happened. So a dog ferociously killed their child. The natural family gets this news. Allah knows if his torn body will be delivered to them or not. The question was asked, what happens in this case? The answer was simply that social services are not accountable. It's the responsibility of the foster family. You saw in Abdullah Sharif's video the case of a girl given to a man, a foster father who raped her 100 times. He was caught and sent to court, but social services were, again, not held responsible. 
They only steal children and give them to foster families. Whatever happens after that, if the child is eaten by a dog, raped, whatever, no problem. After this testimony came the 20 minute coffee break. Upon the conclusion of the symposium, some lawyers answered some questions, received flower bouquets and thanked the attendees. Everyone went home after the coffee and bouquets and things remained the way they were. Of course, there's no problem in publishing such news as long as no action will be taken and nothing new can transpire. But when did all this become a problem? When Muslims started making noise and Sweden was disgraced and put in the spotlight. Only then were their shields deployed and they started defending themselves by denying what they themselves said about themselves. This scientific paper has an answer to those who say, okay, we'll believe you. They abduct children, but in most of those cases, the children benefit psychologically, socially, morally, and ethically. Okay, we believe that they may have lost Islam and they're hereafter, but when it comes to this worldly life, they're probably better off morally and educationally amidst all this prosperity and luxury. Let's see if this is true. This paper is on the Wiley Online Library and has 132 citations, which means that it's fairly popular in the scientific community. But so what? No one cares. It's useless. As long as the media is oblivious and the issue is not trending, no one seems to care. The title is, quote, Into Adulthood, a follow-up study of 718 young children who were placed in out-of-home care during their teens. The paper traces the lives of children who were placed outside their homes, either in foster homes or residential care, meaning not their families. This paper, which follows the cases of 718 of these young people, was issued in 2008. It's not strictly about Muslim children removed from their families, but about all children, some of whom had behavior problems, etc. In all cases, social services in Sweden managed these teens. So let's see how well social services managed and cared for these teens. The abstract of the article states, quote, young women and men from the first group had, in comparison with peers who did not enter care, very high rates of premature death, serious involvement in crime, hospitalizations for mental health problems, teenage parenthood, meaning teens having babies outside of marriage, self-support problems, and low educational attainment. Very high rates of hospitalizations for mental health problems were found among young people and placed for behavioral problems. Breakdown of placement was found to be a robust indicator of poor long-term prognosis. In other words, long-term catastrophic results. In the same paper, we find, quote, the results for young people placed in secure units were dismal. These are the youth who were placed under foster or residential care. Quote, at age 25, 70% had been in prison or were dead. Not a single one, meaning 0%, was doing well if all negative indications in the outcome ladder were included. Zero percent. This is what displacement by social services does. Now let's review this November 2020 investigative report by Swedish TV, SVT. The report cites cases where the children were subjected to various cases of abuse, beating, addiction, sexual abuse, all in the teen residential care centers, which fall under social services in Sweden. The report included 200 from a total of 1,000 of these centers. Some might respond and say, well, what if their parents were ill-treating them, yelling at them? What if they insulted and humiliated them? Aha. Uh -huh. By the way, such things are bound to happen in some families. Children are beaten, insulted, or humiliated. It's all possible. And we're absolutely not condoning any of this. But just look at the paradise these children will be placed in by social services. This paradise includes suicide, death, psychological issues, premature death, sexual abuse, the whole nine yards. Let us next read this report from a newspaper loyal to the Swedish government, Aktar, titled, quote, In the Safe Hands of the Social Services. They're so proud of their great achievements for the year 2020. Total number of children taken by the social services was 27,300 during the year 2020 alone. 33% of them, i.e. around 9,000 of them, are under forcible care. 
We'll remove you from your parents' house and take care of you forcibly. Note the irony in the title, In Safe Hands. We'll see how safe they really are. Let's review additional references. This petition was posted a while ago under the title, Let Our Children Go. The petition was to object to the ongoing fiasco in Sweden with social services removing the children from their families. Hundreds of people participated in the petition before it was shut down. Russian TV published this more than 11 years ago, quote, stolen by Swedish social services. Stolen. Quote, Russian mother slams authorities for taking twins. These poor twins were removed from their mother by force against her wish and theirs by social services. This is from Russian TV more than 11 years ago. After reviewing this testimony from all these non-ISIS references, let's see how the Swedish media is reporting this. On the Swedish SVT channel, this expert from the Swedish Psychological Defense Agency says, quote, threat campaign against Sweden on social media Islamists calling for terrorist attacks. Allahu Akbar! And on Swedish radio, a threat campaign against Sweden calls for terrorist attacks. When we see you lying so blatantly and see that those who expose your crimes are neither terrorists nor Islamists, how can we trust you after that? How can we believe your reasons for removing children from their families? Wallahi, just tell me how. After all of this, let me address those who discourage and dishearten the bereaved Muslims. Unfortunately, some call themselves imams and their words are hailed by the Swedish state websites. Wallahi, why don't you just shut up? Why don't you just do us a favor and zip your lips? All these tragedies were happening under your watch. Yet you didn't help the parents retrieve their children or support them when they came knocking at your door. You didn't help them or warn others about coming to Sweden or tell people that the culture of honor is forbidden in Sweden or do anything practical to rescue the Muslim children or any other children for that matter. Our call includes all people, but you did nothing. You just submitted some empty legal requests and you let everyone down. And the Swedish authorities were left to do whatever they wanted with no one allowed to object. Or they object, but to no avail. Even when your fellow Muslims rose to support the bereaved parents, all you did was to discourage them by saying, you don't know Sweden, don't interfere. Bestow upon us a gift of silence. This is all I wanted to say for now. And just to confirm the reliability and credibility of these references, they're the same sources which didn't mind publishing the truth as long as there were no repercussions. But now, when words are starting to have an effect, the very same sources have reversed their entire narrative. No one threatened you with terrorist attacks or any such nonsense. None of that is true. Just keep your evil away from Muslims, return their children, and stop stealing them. To Muslims we say, if things remain as they are, it's forbidden for you to remain in such countries. Countries with the slogan, honor is forbidden, are forbidden to Muslims. So either they change or you get out. A couple of updates since Dr. Iyad originally published this video. There was a massive protest involving both Muslims and non-Muslims that happened in one of the major cities of Sweden to raise awareness of this crime being perpetrated by Swedish authorities. Also, the Swedish government is now pleading with Facebook to censor all news related to their social services taking children. They claim all this is dangerous misinformation. Maybe some of you will remember the nonstop news in the U.S. during the Trump presidency about immigrant kids in cages, as they were called, and children being separated from their families at the border between Mexico and the United States. Obviously, this is still happening, but Trump is no longer president, so the news abruptly stopped covering it. Well, during that time, if anything, Facebook and other platforms amplified the reports. We have to stand up for those poor children and their families. 
But now when it's Muslim families being affected and it's a government that they like that's doing the kidnapping, mass censorship is back on the table. Will social media do the Swedish government's bidding and start scrubbing our videos, calling it misinformation, when we have just shown you all the official reports that prove this crime against humanity is happening every day? Allah al-Musta'an.